welcome back to another episode of Tech Metals Tuesday. I'm your host, Rebecca Jenkins, and we're back with another episode. We're talking about Rhenium Part 2. So this video is all about the price performance from the past and also some of the forecasts of what the industry is putting money into in research and development for the future. What is Rhenium being used for what's the demand in the industry for this particular metal and um, and just to kind of review and look back on um, what exactly is rhenium rhenium is a technology metal so it's used for emerging technologies it's used for new technology specifically in the aerospace industry and also it's used as a catalyst for the petroleum industry. So uh, some like it hot, but rhenium likes it extremely, extremely fiery hot. It's one of the highest melting points out of all of the technology and metals that we have in our portfolio. It's over 3000 degrees Celsius <laughs> as its melting point. So it's used for a lot of technologies that require a lot of power, right? A lot of uh, high melting point type of, of machines that would require a metal that can withstand that type of heat, that type of intensity. And so rhenium is one of the most rare metals in the world. So out of the Earth's crust, there's a, a, if there's a billion parts, there's one rhenium one part rhenium to a billion other elements. And so it's very, very, uh, very rare. And it's not considered a rare earth metal. It's considered a technology metal because it's not in that lanthanide series in the periodic table of elements. And so if we look here, this is uh, the demand for rhenium in technology. And this is actually based off of a study that we have as uh, people, as a company that's working in this industry. And the demand for rhenium and technology is mainly in aerospace, like I said, but it's also as a catalyst for the petroleum industry. It's used in many different things that require high melting points, but this is like the main focus of where the demand is for rhenium. And before we dive into the future of what the demand is for rhenium, coming soon, let's kind of review the past of how rhenium has performed in the industry for the last couple of years. So from 2020 to 2022, we have this data point, these data points here, and we have these based off of US dollars and euros. So the yellow uh, bars indicate the US dollar amount and the blue bars indicate the euro amount. And as you can see, we started out uh, over 1,500 uh, US dollars worth uh, of rhenium and, and a little bit under that, about probably 1,400 for euros at the beginning of 2020. And then as we saw what happened with the lockdowns, with the pandemic, there people weren't traveling. We were not able to get around. And so naturally, this is what happened is there's this downward sloping line of the demand was just not there during Corona time, during the lockdown, because we weren't traveling as much. We weren't transporting um, different products back and forth. Import export was really, really struggling during this time. And we all knew that traveling was kind of a big no-no during the lockdown. And so this is the results definitely of that time really impacting the aerospace industry. And then, as you can see, kind of towards the end of 2021, there started to be kind of a light at the end of the tunnel where the demand, especially with US dollars, you can really see the difference between the yellow and the blue line, especially in, in I think America is one of the, the largest consumers when it comes to the aerospace industry. Um, and so there was a huge spike in demand kind of getting it back up to that over the 1500 dollar mark and then as you can see towards uh towards the end of 2022 then the euro and the dollar kind of evened out at that 1500 dollar mark rhenium is one of the more expensive uh metals in our portfolio and it's 
because it's a really, really rare metal. And so with there, with there being such a high demand in the aerospace and the petroleum industry, and they need uranium to do the work, uh, that's you know, driving the, the price, of course, because supply and demand, there's a lower supply and it costs because there's not that much of it. And so here's another chart, a bar graph that shows you kind of uh, a little bit more, the different visual of how the line goes down, it dips quite a bit, and then you can see that readjustment back up to um, a little bit above the $1,500 mark. And then towards the end of 2022, you're seeing that the euro is meeting the US dollar there at that price. So what's really interesting to talk about, not just the past performance, I mean, those are, that's actual data, real data that we have from uh, EMHAG, our partner company, the market leader for these strategic assets, these strategic metals in Europe. And they, are, they have this data because they are a trader of the metals and they deal with this you know they deal with the markets and they and they know what the industry uh is charging right to to buy these metals and so this is really interesting to know and now as we look into the future and we talk about some of the data some of the some of the insights like for example mbroker.com states that the value of the global aerospace market reached 290 billion in 2020 with North America accounting for almost half of the total. Like I was saying, the US dollar was really rising in price even before the Euro because of the demand, right? And so it is expected to grow at a rate of 7.7% compound annual growth rate, I would, I would assume here, to 430.7 billion in 2025, and further 5.9% annually until 2030 to a total of 573.6 billion. This is a forecast of the value of the aerospace market. And this is really interesting to think about, right? Like it's 298 billion in 2020. The forecast is 20 in 2030 that the, the cost of the, the market could rise to 573.6 billion based on that compound annual growth rate, right? Of 7.7%. And what that's telling me that this is a really interesting time to get involved in a metal like this because the aerospace industry is at a point of growth. So right now, if you've been watching the news, you've been seeing some of the, um, I guess the media talking about, talking about the space X's of the world, talking about the, the plans of we're returning to the moon, right? We're gonna go and take a lap around the moon. And there's, there's talks of what can we do to expand the industry? And not only that, but expand uh, better, more efficient ways of having uh, air travel in general. There's a lot of research and development being put into this industry. And as they're making more planes, turbines require rhenium. These rocket ships in the aerospace industry requires rhenium because it has such a high melting point. Um, and the creation of gasoline, of petroleum items require rhenium because it has a high melting point. And so as these industries are growing, and today we really focus more on the aerospace industry, but as the petroleum industry also grows, I'm sure there's a lot of research and development going into how that industry can also improve. But if you think about the news, you think about everything that's happening in the development of emerging technologies in aerospace, right now is a huge time of technological development in this industry, and they are requiring rhenium to make that happen. And so it's definitely an interesting metal to, to look into for your portfolio. And as you can see, there was a little dip down uh, during the pandemic when we were all locked down and nobody could travel to now that price has gone up again and i would be really interested to see uh, now over the next couple of years how much that price is going to go up even more there's no guarantee but there is a lot of research and about development happening there's a lot of money being poured into the industry uh, to develop new technologies and when new technologies are developed they require more metals to create those products so one of those metals is rhenium and if you are interested in the aerospace 
industry or if you're interested in the petroleum industry and what kind of new products, new emerging technologies are being created there, then rhenium is definitely a metal that you should look into. So I hope that this video was enlightening when it comes to the past performance of rhenium. And these are the actual real data that we have from the industry, from our partner company, EMHAG, uh, as a wholesale commodities trader, the, the best in Europe. And uh, what is the future forecast kind of looking like for the aerospace industry, for the industry that is demanding this product? And as you can see, there's a lot happening in this industry. And uh, I highly recommend you continue your education and look into Rhenium and all the ways that Rhenium is being used in the world and in the future of production for rocket ships, for planes, for all things that require a very high melting point and a lot of power packed uh, usage for this metal. And I hope you have a great week. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Tech Metals Tuesday. We'll be back next week with a brand new metal. So I hope to see you then. Make sure to give us a like if this video was interesting to you and I will see you next time. Ciao.